Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this panel on early Latin American uh, cinema. I'm Santiago Hidalgo, director of the Cinemedia's research lab at Université de Montréal, and the moderator of the discussion today. Our speakers today include audiovisual archivist and media professor Carolina Capa. Her paper is entitled Argentinian Nitrate, and early cinema history. We have Luciana Correa de Araujo, who teaches film history at the Federal University of Sao Carlos, Brazil. And her paper is entitled uh, The Lazaro Family and Their Intermedial Crafts and Trades in Early Brazilian Cinema. And film historian Daniela Crepaldi Carvalho from the University, University Dade de Sao Paulo, with a paper entitled Crafts and Techniques of Early Cinema in the 1900s Rio de Janeiro, between the theater, the newspaper, and the screen. So welcome, uh, fellow speakers. It was a, a pleasure uh, for me to read and watch these presentations, which I think reflect well uh, the challenges of researching, writing about, and reconstructing the very rich early film history of Latin America. And I think these three excellent presentations really speak to one another in different ways. Mm -hmm. As I was watching the archival footage from the preservation and research project led by Carolina Capa, I was struck by the early images of a group of men sitting at a cafe on the street. And I recalled something uh, my brother once said, um, which I always found amusing and interesting and insightful. He was asked if he had ever been to Paris, and he answered no. Uh, he had never been to Paris, but knew something about Paris because he had been to Buenos Aires. <laughs> and then we find in Danielle's paper, mm -hmm. uh, she makes direct mention of this, of how early cinema in Brazil figures into a sort of attempt at emulating the architecture and look of the Paris like Buenos Aires. And similar, similarly, Luciana's paper allows us to examine the history of early cinema in Rio from the perspective of a family who worked at the Moulin Rouge in Rio. <laughs> and what seems to emerge as a connected picture, complex modernization of the main city centers in Latin America, uh, we're in the process of defining an identity that blends European aesthetic with local culture and cinema seems to play an important role in this process in very unique and interesting ways. And so this is a general comment to get the conversation going. I have more specific questions to ask about the presentations, but I thought I would try to put my finger on these links between the papers without being overly reductive of the research and wondering what the speakers would, if the speakers would like to comment on that, especially in light of something Car Carolina said in her presentation that it's not easy to identify an immediate historical value to the fragmented films that she's in the process of preserving. But they acquire, I think, an interesting rereading in light of the other two papers. So there are also other questions I would like to raise if there's time about the methodologies, accessibility to primary sources and so forth. But I thought I would just get the ball rolling with uh, this general question, which I think all three, uh, it's pertinent to all three uh, speakers. Well, can I say something? Uh, thanks, Santiago, for your comments. I think that the translational nature of the cinema in Brazil at that time was very, very strong. Uh, for instance, the uh, regarding the family, the Lazaro family, Sorry, I'm going to use the Brazilian pronunciation, Lazaro. <laughs> uh, regarding the Lazaro family, uh, they produced uh, a film called Il Guarani, which he, well, they were Italians or uh, daughters of, Italian, of an Italian couple. And they produced this film, Il Guarani, uh, adapting a Brazilian opera. Uh, and, and this opera was an adaptation of a Brazilian novel a very iconic one. Uh, so in Brazilian film, we're going to find many um, immigrants, many Italian immigrants adapting 
o Guarani as a way to, uh, be, to participate of the Brazilian culture. So I guess that Il Guarani with this mix of Italian, Brazilian, and, uh, and also uh, French, because it was a, a film that, uh, is a um, particularly good example of this transnational NATO Brazilian film back then. I, I, I can only say uh, one, f first of all, thank you for the opportunity also to be speaking about Latin American cinema. That is something that I, I really appreciate for everybody here to be listening to this conversation. Um, I can only say that uh, absolutely this link that you, you've done, uh, Santiago, between the, the three papers is, is, is quite clear and we are, and, and cinema as a tool for creating identity in this, uh, um, in this context of, of, of migration that was uh, so uh, well known in the in the in the in the early days context in in, in Argentina especially, but I think also in Brazil. And when we recall the names of the pioneers in Argentina, all of them are not uh, Argentinian native uh, names: uh, Glucksmann, P, uh, Bache, Filippini. All of them are Italian, Austrian. Uh, uh, French people that uh, traveled or that came in a way searching for, for certain work to be done to, to, to survive. And in a sense, there are certain uh, examples in the, in the nitrate collection, at, at least, of, of people who, who did make uh, cinema as a tool for surviving, as a, as a type of work. Uh, photographers in, uh, in small towns in the middle of, of the country that came to be also filmmakers. So in that sense, uh, European um, uh, ways of looking and also, of course, technical and technology tools are there in, in, in almost every uh, film that we have. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it, it, will, it would be, I, as I say in the, in the paper, I am a film archivist, I'm not a film historian. So it would be great also to, to trace uh, with these kind of films of fragments that at least is what we have uh, to trace those continuities between the, how the, the European look uh, uh, emerges in the, in the new identities, in the new images in Argentina, in, in Latin America, in the general. And Danielle, I'm sure you must have yes. some quite a lot to say on the matter. Yes, uh, uh, it's uh, first of all, I want to follow Carolina in thanking everybody for ha having or uh, for organizing this uh, panel, uh, this Latin American panel. It's really important to, to us to talk about that. And I, I'm very glad to be talking with uh, these two friends because we see lots of relationship. Uh, we live uh, the same uh, problems. Uh, we don't have, uh, as Carolina uh, puts, uh, not uh, we don't have an industry, only survival is uh, the same thing uh, that happens in Brazil. And uh, there is this, uh, so the cameras, they come from uh, Europe uh, and uh, uh, so we have this uh, family. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, my, the Ferres family, that is a French family. Uh, but uh, so there is this uh, huge influence uh, from France, uh, but uh, at the same time, so we see that we see in the construction of the of the streets and avenues and how they want to organize uh, a view of a city that is an illusion and how cinema the dialogues with it as there is this uh, huge influence of the of the european cinema but at the same time so we have uh, as we have this uh, artisanal effort to to make things happen as we don't have an a film industry in Brazil, not uh, at this time we certainly don't have. And uh, so we, we see how photographers and we're connected uh, to, to people in the film business to, to, in order to, to roll films in uh, like in some places that were first of all made, uh, made to, to to take photos so we don't we didn't have a cinema sets at the beginning so uh, what we see uh, like uh, in the Meruido uh, which I mentioned and, and in some I think uh, films that Luciana mentioned too 
is that uh, there is this uh, photographic uh, uh, quality. I, I don't know if I can say that, but uh, there is an effort to put the things in the way they, they photographed for, for theater. So there is this theatrical influence, but at the same time, we relate these pictures to the, the, the films, to the pictures, to the still pictures that were taken of the theatrical performances. So there is this influence of photography and uh, of theater in this film. So we have a film, film d'art, for example, that tried to, to mimic the French film, but at the same time with the, the uh, specific uh, characteristics that uh, were related to the way we could produce films then. I'm going to um, take the moment to read a few questions to get the, continue the discussion and I'll come back to some more specific questions after. So there's a question uh, for uh, Danielle from I believe uh, Jitka de Preval who asks, uh, did you see in Mark Ferez's archives a mention of Jean Vermilion, a pate operator who stayed in Brazil for probably a year starting in August 1907? I, I, I had uh, read this question in the chat and it, uh, I started to think about that and I don't remember, don't this, I don't remember this name actually, I, I'll search for it. But it's interesting because you, you said the name, uh, the date 1907, we have some doubts regarding when Mark Ferrez signed the contract with Pate, uh, it, if it was 1908, more or less, or a little bit early, earlier. So it's very interesting, this information, to know that this man, uh, this Frenchman was here. And even to, for, for us to, to understand, to, it explains a lot of, uh, of how, our cinema uh, happened, I think, in Brazil and the influences and so on. So I'll search for it and maybe uh, I'll, I'll make a quick search in the things that I have from now and talk to some colleagues and maybe I can put this information in the forum tomorrow uh, if I find it because it inter interests me a lot. But for now, I, I'm sorry, I don't have this answer. Thank you. Question from uh, Rafael de Freire. To write the history of early cinema in Latin America, we must depend on fragments. Fragments of films, as Car Carolina showed, fragments of information scattered in the press, as Luciana and Daniel demonstrated. Do you think we are developing a different kind of me methodology to face uh, these difficulties? Um, I guess this question is addressed to the three of you. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity for me just to add a little point, um, which is that I noticed that in some papers, like such as uh, yours, Daniela, uh, you rely on what I would call a more traditional sources to build those kinds of histories. But my question, I guess for all three of you, but especially the two that rely on early discourse, uh, how accessible as this information in order to piece together these histories, because both rely a lot on these kinds of primary okay. sources. So the two, two part question, are there new methodologies and how accessible are the sources? Mm -hmm. Well, you I think- to start, Luciana? Yeah, Please. Think here in Brazil, there is a long tradition of researching uh, non-filmic materials so uh, I agree with Rafael, but I don't think we are developing uh, this kind of research now. Uh, it has been a long tradition because since we don't have many films, uh, film historians usually um, explored non-filmic ma materials. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's true for us. We work with traces, fragments, uh, and you know, it's we have to deal with all the the lack of information, as as Jean Claude Bernard, the uh, French Brazilian historian, says, uh, the lack of information is our first information, and we have <laughs> to work with that. Uh, I I would like to add to another question. Uh, do you mind if I 
do so uh, because someone asked about the um, the newspapers I, I researched if there wasn't um, specialized film magazines film periodicals uh, there were film period film magazines but uh, they were quite a few as long as I know uh, at that time and they are not uh, they're difficult to have access to. Um, so we, um, we rely basically on newspapers and also illustrated magazines, uh, which also um, address film activities. Are these, uh, are these uh, newspapers and journals now digitized? Yes, thank God. It's a, it's a, Quite a, an addiction, but every time we go to the, those newspapers, it's hard to, to leave them. But yes, they are many of them. Not, uh, of course, we, we miss lots of them, but we have um, many uh, newspapers and magazines digitized. And uh, just one follow up question sorry, the, the brevet that you found, where is that uh, accessible mm. from? The, sorry, what? The brevet, the, um, how do you say that in English? The, uh, the patent for the machine that... Uh, yeah. uh, the the patent, uh, there is a, a, a collection at Arquivo Nacional in Rio, which unfortunately, unfortunately I was not able to, to research because of the, the pandemic. Uh, but then I found uh, a copy at Cinemateca Brasileira of the of the document and also of the copy of some of the drawings and um, also in in the book in a book called Palacios e Poetas um, there are two pictures of the of the drawings. Okay, Daniel. Me May I add something? Uh, it's, uh, I, I totally agree with uh, what uh, uh, Luciana said uh, regarding the, the way we have to, how we deal uh, writing the history of our cinema. Like we don't have films, we have uh, uh, very few films from the ones, uh, considering the amount of films that were shot. And so it's like uh, what we have is the Emeroteca. Uh, it's the it's a library, a virtual library, uh, with uh, many of our newspapers published since uh, you know, the, the beginning of the press in Brazil. Uh, that is, uh, it's uh, it belongs to the Biblioteca Nacional, the, 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 to our national library. So it is online. Uh, for the, the people who want to, to search uh, these uh, magazines and newspapers regarding the Brazilian context, but I think regarding all contexts, I, I'll invite to visit the, the Dormitor Journal project because there are lots of links to this uh, material there. Uh, I, I put some links of all, all the magazines that I found during, since the, the, my, my, the, from the period period when I was writing my thesis, uh, these magazines and uh, uh, illustrated magazines and, uh, and uh, uh, newspapers. And also, as Luciana, I used a lot uh, the Arquivo Nacional, which is closed now, but uh, the, the Cinemateca, which is closed to, due to this idiot's Brazilian political situation uh, and for, uh, because of the COVID. So we have two COVIDs uh, here we are facing in Brazil. So this is, but how we do like, we, and lots of, uh, the, the, mainly these uh, sources, but uh, public, uh, books that uh, were published, uh, uh, fictional uh, texts that were published, uh, in this period too, we, we, we put them in dialogue with these sources, trying to, to take some distance and analyzing it. Uh, so which yeah, is- the, 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 That comes across. Yeah. And uh, Carolina, uh, your work is uh, extremely important in, in uncovering these lost films and bringing them to our attention. And something that seems to come across in your presentation is that, well, now you, now we have the films, like how do we use them 
to reconstruct the history. And I'm wondering if you're intending, let's say, to complete that other side of the picture, maybe through similar strategies as Lucien and Daniel, to see about the discourse at the time, how these films were exhibited, in what places, because this would seem to be like the, the a missing side of the picture that would bring some 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 value to those films in a different way. Yes, um, uh, the 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 project intended initially to to build that uh, that that uh, full uh, spectrum of uh, of the history, but we we couldn't do it because we. Uh, we lack of time. Actually, I, I realized at that time that I was being a film archivist and I, that, that my, my objective was to give access in order to other people to, to build and to begin at least to build this, this history. And, and, and hopefully it will, it will happen, I hope. This is a brand new the, the, the website that, the, uh, that goes with the book. They are all in Spanish, and I know that it's also very uh, difficult for English speaking or, or, or other languages uh, speaking historians. But we also wanted to to give access to to Spanish speaking historians and Spanish speaking film archivists. So that was that was also a aim of the of the project. But in the in the sense of uh, the, the the question that was uh, doing. Rafael before and uh, Daniela and Luciana was now uh, talking about the new methodology. Um, Nitrato Argentino is, is trying to prove in a way that we can also build methodology giving access to these materials. These materials, these elements exist. They were there. They were there since the beginnings of, of their existence. They are the original elements from the time. But in the early, uh, in the in the daily processes inside the archives, this this uh, lost information, this lack of information, kept them uh, aside from uh, the the publications, the screenings, the I even the 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 historians' writings uh, regarding the period. So I hope that this new access to the this strange materials, the species may may give new thoughts to the to the film historians. Uh, now I think uh, I, I I did my job in that sense. Nonetheless, and I and I say that also in the in the in the paper. And we saw this especially the first day when Camille was uh, uh, where they were speaking about these marks in the in the films and how much they worked in order to trying to understand what those marks meant when we catalog and we try to identify a film that has nothing except the film itself, because we did also uh, try to, to cross information with newspapers and with, mm -hmm. with uh, 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 journals, in technical journals, but what we found is that those uh, sources only talked about uh, fiction films and picture, um, future um, features fiction films, so but uh, they didn't talk about these uh, non-theatrical films in the way that we wanted to to mm -hmm. to find their information. So uh, the film itself talks about the film. So uh, we also wanted to say that film itself, the element, the material, is also a source, and that we we and you as uh, historians also it will be. Uh, 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 fortunately, thanks to the digital uh, uh, materials uh, now accessible, try to also uh, uh, learn to, to, to read these technical elements of the film itself in order to, to, to build this uh, more deep and strong uh, history of these courses. Thank you. I mean, I, I think that uh, certainly I think everybody recognizes the challenge posed by uncovering fragments of films. And they're a bit uh, delocalized, a bit de-temporalized. And um, so at, at, the, at the first level, there's a just kind of apprehension of what this is. And that's what I mentioned. You know, I, I latch on to different things, what, I, what looks and evokes an image for me of something bigger uh, and you know it shows an architecture it shows a way of a sociological behavior you know how people relate to one another 
and things that you yourself identified. Um, so, I mean, at this very first level, there's a kind of already something that is triggered and that needs to be followed up through other questions. And I guess those other questions that come to my mind is, you know, where were these films being shown? What was the public? What was the intended public? Um, you know, what was the regional aspect of it? Where, you know, was it centralized in Buenos Aires or also in other regions of Argentina? So I think that those are questions, you know, they're follow-up questions that go further. Um, but are I think in, interesting in the long term to to explore. Uh, one I, thing that I noticed about the aesthetics, and that's one thing I just wanted to ask you quickly. Well, I have two questions, very quick. One, are these films accessible? Because I went on your website yeah. and I saw screen captures of the films. But are the actual films accessible on your website? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. I, I need to just find the right link. <laughs> okay, yes. I, uh, when, when you enter the registry, you may. If the film is uh, digitized, it's there. I mean, the movie image. Okay. Okay. The, the second thing I noticed, and this could be just attributable to its fragmentary nature, is that all of the examples you showed are single shot films. You know, they're just one shot, then they end, and then, you know, they look like actualities actually from Pate, a lot of them. Um, so I'm wondering if you came across films that have, you know, multiple shots that are more constructed or more developed aesthetically, or do they remain at this kind of level that uh, I'm describing? Yes. Uh, regarding the, the places where the films were shown, actually, we did uh, work on, 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 on that issue, especially because of the provenance in the sense of, uh, for instance, Two of the main uh, collections that we have inside the nitrate collections are one from a, a school, a national school in Buenos Aires, the Colegio Nacional de Buenos Aires, where we have the Pate scientific films uh, there. And we know that all these films from that collection were shown in the school. So we do know that that was the venue of these films exclusively. And another collection inside the collection is a family collection also. And that is not in Buenos Aires, it's, it, it's in the center of the of a country, which, you know, it's a very big country, despite the fact that we, we, we think Argentina, Buenos Aires. And that, uh, that also, uh, it's an evidence that something was going on regionally. So that, that's also a very interesting thing. Um, and your other question, sorry, the one in the... Uh, well, no, I'm just saying that there's, a, yes. there's the next stage. So I'm going to... I guess there's more questions that I anticipated, so I no, need to. No, you said I about the single shot. Oh yeah, the but single ex shot. Excuse me. I just want to congratulate Carolina on her project. It was just a beautiful book. I just saw your presentation, and uh, it's a beautiful book and project. I love the the women. I thought of Carmen, the women going out of uh, the cigarette uh, uh, factory. Yes. Dancing. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Uh, uh, regarding the, the single shot, actually, no. Uh, uh, films uh, get to be more complex uh, in, a, uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, through the years, in the, in the period. Uh, but it's true that there are certain uh, motives and certain ways of, of filmmaking that continue in, in, the, in the period that are more that we may we may say that in 1907, 1910 in in, in France there was a, a change in the ways of filmmaking that in Argentina remain for more for a longer period. So that's something that happens that there's some kind of permanence in the way of filmmaking that uh, takes a long time to transform. That that's something that did happen. We have a question from Marcello Sereni from Milan. He says, congratulations to the panel. Question to Luciana. Did the Italian influences in early cinema in Brazil come from the theater tours of some Italian theater companies? And until when did that continue? I guess with the arrival of the sound, these connections are stopped. Right, thanks. So I think that can also be a, quick, a question for Luciana. Oh, no, that is a question for Luciana, sorry. Yeah, okay. no, that's a uh, question for you. Yes, there's a huge influence. Uh, of Italians in, in Brazilian silent cinema, but not only Brazilian silent cinema. Uh, there were many uh, stage groups, many Italian stage groups touring in Brazil 
or uh, created in Brazil by immigrants. Some of them uh, played in, in Italian. And the Italian immigration is particularly strong in Sao Paulo, uh, but not only in Sao Paulo, you're going to find uh, many Italians or Italian descendants working in cinema. And that influence goes on, goes beyond the silent period. For instance, in, in the early 50s, uh, there is in, in Sao Paulo this um, industrialization, the so-called industrialization of Brazilian cinema, and uh, some very rich Italian uh, if Italian immigrants, they create the Veracruz studios and they hired Alberto Cavalcanti, the Brazilian director who was working in Europe. And Cavalcanti brings many uh, foreign technicians, uh, among them many, many Italians. So, and there is a, a book on Italians in Brazilian cinema. Uh, so it's a, a very, very strong connection that we have in Brazilian, in Brazilian cinema. I don't know how much time we have left, but I have a question for Danielle because it's uh, particular to a research project that we carry out in our lab, which is on the history of uh, editing and especially terminology and concepts related to editing. And in your paper, you make reference to the fact that in 1915, around that period of time, there's some discourse that starts to be uh, appear on the question of editing. And uh, how much of this material have you found? What, what seems to be interesting about it? And I guess what terminologies are used to, to define editing? Mm -hmm. Sorry, and Logo, I'm just gonna interrupt one second because we are, um, we are eight minutes over time. So we, it is time for us to wrap up uh, only because we've got to stay on schedule for the uh, other events, but if you could just maybe give a brief answer and then we can um, do it. Have some time to discuss okay. later during the cocktail. Sure. Wonderful. Okay, uh, actually, I'd like to have your email, Santiago, Santiago, to talk to you and send you what I have about it. Actually, it has everything to do, uh, to do with uh, the star system from 1915, although we uh, research and we see that there are lots of uh, North American uh, films, film, films from the United States. In Brazil, from 1909 uh, or 1908, we, we see this discourse around 1915 when they, when they mentioned, for example, that uh, Griffith, they mentioned Griffith and that uh, he cuts the people from the middle or cuts uh, to... It is a, a way of referring to it different from what uh, we do now. The text mentioning the close-up is from a, a text that the writer, uh, the text I use, uh, where Jules Ferre says uh, he is, um, that we did not have the close-up. He wrote it in 1942, so it is, he's re referring to something that happened, but he knew already of this grammar. But uh, nevertheless, we had this mention of, uh, of uh, how the film is, how Griffith cut the films, and it has to do with uh, the way that the North American picture was coming to Brazil, and uh, uh, in, in spite of uh, like an European films, we see that it's, uh, in, uh, I mentioned Rio de Janeiro actually, uh, here we, we had lots of uh, North, more North American films and more publicized films than we had uh, concerning uh, European films uh, in around 1915. But I'd like to have your email and I'll send you okay. the, what I found uh, Great. Nice. Thank you very much. Better. Thank you to uh, all the panelists. It was a pleasure to meet you and to discuss these very important questions with you. And I'm sure everyone appreciated it. So looking forward to seeing your future work. And uh, thank you also to the conference organizers for welcoming me here today. Thank you. <laughs>